In 1973, the movie adaptation of William Peter Blatty's best-selling novel, The Exorcist, first turned filmgoers' heads with its dizzying depiction of a young girl possessed by a demonic spirit known as Pazuzu. But long before he took hold of the silver screen, Pazuzu had already commanded fear and fascination as an ancient demon of Mesopotamian myth. And now, thanks to this recent turn as a matinee idol and the enduring legacy of the Exorcist films, the demon's presence is stronger than ever. Today on Scream to Screen, we're going to sift through the sands of time to delve into the true story behind the demon that possesses the exorcist. Before we do that, make sure you subscribe to Graveyard Shift and let us know in the comments which true life ghost stories you'd like us to cover in the future. The demon Pazuzu is never actually mentioned by name in the first film but he makes his presence known early on by appearing as the unforgettable, foreboding statue seen by Father Marin during an archaeological dig in Iraq during the opening of The Exorcist. In Blatty's novel, the statue is directly referred to as one that depicts Pazuzu, but in the first Exorcist film, the only hint to the ancient demon of myth is his one-of-a-kind appearance. Pazuzu in the film, like in many real-world statues and pieces of Mesopotamian art, portray the creature as a combination of animal and human parts, with his right hand pointing upwards and his left hand downwards. He is the body of a man, the head of a lion, or sometimes a dog, eagle-like taloned feet, two pairs of wings, a scorpion's tail, and of course, a serpentine penis. Perhaps this is why director William Friedkin never felt it necessary to give the demon his proper name. Pazuzu was going to make an impression just fine without being explicitly named. After all, Pazuzu had been making his presence known for quite some time before his big screen debut. The demon god enjoyed his first height of popularity from 2000 BCE to 1000 BCE. But while he now exists as the only Mesopotamian demon to become a pop culture icon, during the time of the Babylonian and Assyrian people, Pazuzu was far from the only demonic god to be feared. Pazuzu was part of royal demonic lineage, and in fact was a prince with his father Hanbi, the ruler of the underworld and the king of demons. But it was Pazuzu's brother, Humbaba, who was the first member of the family of deities to achieve popular notoriety in the poem The Epic of Gilgamesh as a demon god. But alas, he fared no better than his brother would by the climax of The Exorcist, as Humbaba was also vanquished by the heroes by the end of his story. But where he failed in the context of that epic poem, Pazuzu's brother did pave the way for the demon god in popular culture. It's possible that Pazuzu made an appearance in the Old Testament, where King Solomon faces a wind demon while attempting to build the Temple of Jerusalem. After capturing this bothersome spirit, Solomon learns that its name is Ephippus. According to the Old Testament, Ephippus destroyed the land and murdered the people with his fearsome winds. This method of mayhem bore more than a passing resemblance to the stories of Pazuzu, a demon known to control the wind, using his breath to cause considerable damage, disease, and death for miles around. If this was a depiction of Pazuzu, it's not that surprising that he went by a different name. Like many other ancient demons and gods, Pazuzu has changed in many ways over the years. His first known appearance was in an early Babylonian myth where he was simply called Zu or Anzu. In this form, he was a gigantic bird with the ability to breathe water and fire. This reputation as a storm bird remained when Pazuzu split off later in Babylonian times to become a demon god in command of the wind. As Pazuzu, this being controlled the southwest and west winds that blew through Babylon and Assyria. These winds were feared by the people of the times as they often had the power to cause famine, locusts, and even destructive storms. And this could be why ancient people often decided to appeal to Pazuzu directly through worship, pleading for him to control his winds and use them in the people's favor instead of against them. But why would Mesopotamian people think a demon would possibly help them and spare their lands or their lives? While the term demon in the modern world carries with it the suggestion of evil, this was not inherently the case in the ancient world. The English word demon is a translation of the Greek word daemon, a word which simply means spirit. In ancient Mesopotamia, demons were not always evil, but even evil demons like Pazuzu were still capable of doing good, if it suited them. Pazuzu's believers suppose that as a demonic god and the son of the king of demons, Pazuzu's status carried with it certain privileges and powers that if properly worshipped, the demon might see fit to extend to them. 
Mostly his purview as a demonic influencer extended only so far as to keeping other demons from harming his own followers. Archaeologists have discovered ancient protection plaques to Pazuzu that were often hung in a sick person's room so that the demon might protect the ill from others like himself. One of the chief adversaries he was often invoked to ward off was Pazuzu's own wife, the demon Lamashtu, who was thought to be especially dangerous to pregnant women and newborn babies. Pazuzu was often called upon to assist during pregnancy and prayed to by women to keep them and their children safe. But of course, Pazuzu's role as a protector of women has now been eclipsed by his role as a possessor of them after his modern depiction in The Exorcist. The ability to shift shape and become what is needed for the time and story has helped the monsters of myth to endure into the present day. In 1971's novel, The Exorcist, the demon Pazuzu wages a long-standing war with the priest, Father Marin, that culminates in their battle for the soul of a 12-year-old girl named Reagan, who's possessed by the demon. The creators of The Exorcist jettison most of the already established lore regarding Pazuzu for their version. They don't even call the demon by a proper name. The closest they get is the moniker Captain Howdy, which Reagan, Pazuzu's soon-to-be victim, explains she learns while playing with a Ouija board. There's likewise no mention of the demon's command over the winds or any of the rest of his demonic royal family. Similarly, his behavior with young Reagan doesn't exactly portray him as a protector of women. Instead, for this interpretation, Pazuzu becomes what the filmmakers need him to be, a simple, unknowable force of unspeakable evil and corruption. And it worked. The Exorcist film became a worldwide phenomenon and was only surpassed recently as the highest-grossing horror film of all time. Even without being named, the statue of Pazuzu and his monstrous actions were enough to set people's imaginations on fire as they tried to figure out the demon's true nature. Only in later installments of the Exorcist series and subsequent appearances in other media have the fuller picture of the ancient Pazuzu come back to light. Pazuzu finally tells the audience his proper name in the 1977 sequel to the original Exorcist, proclaiming at one point that he is Pazuzu, Prince of the Evil Spirits of the Air. While nearly universally panned as a disappointment, the sequel The Exorcist II, The Heretic, not only officially named Pazuzu as the demon pulling the strings behind Reagan's possession, but also returned the power of locust swarms to the ancient being. The Demon Prince rebounded yet again for the much better received follow-up, The Exorcist III, in which Pazuzu convinces the spirit of a murderer called the Gemini Killer to join him in possessing the body of Father Karras, the priest who aided Father Marin, Pazuzu's vanquisher from the original Exorcist. Pazuzu has since gone on to appear in other film installments of the franchise. In both the film Exorcist The Beginning and the fifth installment in the series, Pazuzu is shown in his first encounter with Father Marin. The two duel in Africa and Pazuzu's loss and exorcism by Father Marin breeds a resentment that shapes the demon and all his screen appearances thereafter, including his part in the recent Exorcist TV show in which he picks up another alias to go along with Captain Howdy and is referred to as the Salesman. The salesman moniker seems fitting, as people continue to buy whatever he's selling. Now not satisfied to relegate himself to just one film franchise, Pazuzu's popularity has now propelled him beyond the Exorcist series. On the TV show Constantine, for example, Pazuzu appears in a story where he teams up with the show's hero to face off against his old mythological nemesis, his wife, Lamashtu. This is clearly a nod to his old habits of protecting the innocent when properly motivated. He also figures prominently in the graphic novel The Demon of the Eiffel Tower. A statue of Pazuzu has appeared on an album cover by the music group Gorillaz, and he's made an appearance as a key plot point in the animated series The Venture Brothers. The use of the statue of Pazuzu as a sinister Easter egg hidden in the background of various film scenes continues to this day and only seems to be increasing in frequency. Pazuzu's idol can be glimpsed in films as recent and diverse as Spider-Man, Far From Home, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, as well as older films like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and Legend. Is it simply the primal menace of the appearance of Pazuzu alone, even if only in statue form, that seems to guarantee him a spot in the shared shadow brain of modern pop culture? Or is it what the statue represents? The statue of Pazuzu has now moved beyond its mythic origins and has been co-opted into a symbol and shorthand for the Exorcist saga as a whole. Perhaps the increase in appearances as a hidden trinket in other films, whether as an homage to the gloom and grandeur of the original film, or an irreverent wink against it, is simply the result of supply not meeting demand. 
The Exorcist series remains a vital and lucrative vein for filmmakers to tap, as audiences continue to plead for more Pazuzu. If horror as a genre serves any purpose other than to entertain, maybe it's that it gives back a sense of control to its audience by allowing them to experience through metaphor and monsters the terror of the real world, albeit with the distinction that they, the audience, will survive this experience, no matter how horrifying, and that they might even get a happy ending. Put another way, horror is the demon some prey to in order to keep worse demons at bay. With a new Exorcist sequel from Blumhouse Studios already slated to start filming soon, the stage is set to reintroduce the ancient Mesopotamian demon god to a new host of believers. So what do you think? Will Pazuzu rise to the occasion again in the next Exorcist film? Will he be friend or foe or a little of both? Let us know in the comments below if you have the courage. And don't forget, like, share, and subscribe for more videos from The Graveyard Shift.